Anastasia Nikolaevna Romanova was born at Petersburg Palace in St. Petersburg on June 5, 1901 to Tsar Nicholas II of Russia and Tsarina Alexandra Fyodorovna. As Tsarina Alexandra had given birth to three daughters in succession, there was great pressure on her when she became pregnant for the fourth time. An heir really had to be born now. But on June 5, 1901, Alexandra gave birth to a fourth daughter. The disappointment of the nobility was great. They felt that Alexandra had failed in her duty to Russia. For the people, however, it did not matter whether a prince or princess was born. The birth of a Tsar's child meant for the people, in any case, among other things, shortened prison sentences and great feasts. Nicholas and Alexandra wanted to raise their children themselves, unlike many other European royal houses. Therefore, Anastasia grew up in a close and happy family and spent much time with her sisters. Anastasia and her sisters received a thorough education for their future roles as representatives of their father and their country. Anastasia was very intelligent, but she was also lazy and easily bored and paid little attention in class. The girls were also prepared to become interesting candidates for the royal European marriage market. Anastasia was especially close to her sister Maria, the Tsar's third daughter, as they shared a bedroom together. The girls liked music and played the balalaika and the guitar. Anastasia was an animal lover, so much so that she turned into a quiet and withdrawn child after the death of her first dog. A new dog was given to Anastasia and would die in her arms in Yekaterinburg. The outbreak of the Russo-Japanese War and its political consequences created unrest in Russia. The Tsar was therefore delighted when on August 12, 1904, finally an heir to the throne, Alexei, was born. But the joy was short-lived, as soon it became clear that Alexei was suffering from the hereditary and at the time fatal disease, hemophilia. In order to ensure the survival of her son, Alexandra put all her hope in the faith healer Grigory Rasputin. Because the people were not informed about the Tsarevich's illness, the relationship between the Tsarina and the controversial Rasputin was considered to be very upsetting. This caused the reputation of Alexandra and the royal family to plummet. Anastasia had a very good relationship with Alexei and was often at his side when he was ill and in pain. When Alexei was well, the children loved to play together and Alexei shared Anastasia's fondness for dogs. In 1914, the First World War erupted. In order to contribute to the war effort, Tsarina Alexandra and her two eldest daughters, Olga and Tatiana, attended a crash course in nursing. Maria and Anastasia were considered too young to attend, but they were regularly seen in a hospital near St. Petersburg, where they could be found talking and playing games with the wounded soldiers. The war caused much unease in Russia. At first, the Russian citizens supported Russia's participations in the war. But due to the army's many defeats, by 1917, over 6 million Russian soldiers had died. The economy plummeted and food shortages became an issue. To the great dissatisfaction of the citizens, any food that was available went to the army and the scarcity among the people increased. This caused food riots and revolts, which were violently suppressed by the Tsarist National Guard. Hundreds of people were killed or wounded. The Royal Guard's actions only caused more discontent, and in 1917, the food riots turned into political uprising. The Russian people projected their hatred onto Nicholas and his family, who were already quite unpopular due to Tsarina Alexandra's connection to the by now assassinated Rasputin. On February 24, 1917, a spontaneous popular uprising started in Moscow, which started the first phase of the Russian Revolution. Although the Tsarist Royal Guard had put down every uprising until then, this time soldiers of the Guard shot their own officers and joined the uprising. 
One week later, on March 2nd, Nicholas was forced to abdicate the throne in favor of his brother Michael and the new government of Russia imprisoned Nicholas, Alexandra and their children. They were initially put under house arrest in their palace in Tsarskoselo, but later they were transferred to the small town of Tobolsk in Siberia. When in November 1917 the Bolsheviks came to power, it was decided that the Tsar and his family had to leave Tobolsk. The royal family traveled in uncomfortable carriages through the freezing landscape of Siberia until they were put on a train in the town of Tumen. They were first sent to Omsk, but the local authorities would not allow them to continue their journey, so the train was forced to turn back and travel via Yekaterinburg to Moscow. In Yekaterinburg, however, their escort handed them over to the local authorities, leaving them in the hands of the Soviets. They followed a short period of imprisonment, after which Anastasia and her family were executed during the night of 16 to 17 July 1918 in the basement of the Yepatif House, which was also called the House of Special Purpose, by order of Commander Yakov Yurovsky. The family doctor, Botkin, the Tsar's chambermaid, the Empress's lady-in-waiting, Demidova, and the family cook were also murdered. After the first round of gunshots, some of the Grand Duchesses were still alive as they were wearing corsets in which they had hidden diamond jewelry. The diamonds had stopped the bullets and the girl survived. A second round of shots was therefore fired and whoever was still alive after this was stabbed to death with bayonets. The soldiers carried the bodies of the royal family outside at 2.30 in the morning and put them in trucks. Their bodies were transported to an abandoned mine shaft of a former iron mine. There, they were undressed and their clothes were set on fire. This is how the soldiers discovered the jewelry in the corsets of the Grand Duchesses. The bodies were thrown into the flooded mine shaft. However, the water was not high enough to hide the bodies, and the next day, the order was given to bury the bodies somewhere else. The remains were taken out of the mine, after which Jurovsky and his soldiers tried to burn the bodies of Nicholas, Alexandra, Alexei and Dr. Botkin. They did not succeed, so it was decided to take the bodies to another mine shaft. The lorries in which the bodies were transported got stuck in the mud on a country road north of Yerkaterinburg. Despite the efforts, the soldiers failed to advance, so they decided to leave the bodies at that spot. After that, the bodies disappeared without a trace for a long time. In the mid-1970s, nine bodies, which had been doused with sulfuric acid, were found in a mass grave. Only after the collapse of the Soviet Union, the bodies were exhumed and Nicholas, his wife and three of his children were identified by DNA testing. Two children were missing. To find out who was missing, two inquiries were held. The first investigation showed that the Grand Duchess Maria and Tsarovich Alexei were missing. But in the second investigation, the American researcher William Maples came to the conclusion that the bodies of Anastasia and Alexei were missing. The recovered remains were interred in the crypt of the Imperial family in St. Peter and Paul's Cathedral in St. Petersburg in 1998, 80 years after the execution of the royal family. Because of the contradictory statements in the newspapers and the mess that was made during the operation to hide the bodies, a deep confusion set in about what happened in Yekaterinburg on the night of the execution. The fate of the imperial family, therefore, remained a subject of controversy for a long time. Rumors were spread concerning the survival of part of the imperial family. Soon, this led to the claim that Anastasia survived the massacre thanks to the diamonds sewn into her dress, which were said to have ricocheted the bullets. During an interrogation, a soldier would have certified that a body was missing before the remains were buried and that during the journey to the mines, he would have heard human moans. Anastasia was said to have survived the events at the Yepatev house. Soon, pretenders to the name and title of Anastasia emerged. The most famous pretender to be Anastasia is probably Anna Anderson. For 60 years, she maintained that she was Anastasia. 
Other well less known pretenders were Eugenia Smith and Magdalene Veres. Although Anna Anderson did not win the court cases concerning her claim to be Anastasia, she did not lose them either. In 1967, and again in Cassation in 1970, the German courts ruled that Anna Anderson had not proved her imperial identity, but they could not rule out that Anastasia had survived the massacre. The 1967 report states, the death of the Grand Duchess Anastasia in Yekaterinburg cannot be regarded as an irrefutable historical fact. The rumors of a possible escape of the Tsar's two missing children were put to bed after human remains were found in a grave close to the burial place of the other Romanovs in August 2007. On April 30, 2008, scientists confirmed that the remains were indeed these of Alexei and his sister Anastasia. The bodies of the children had been burned, and with them in the grave, remains of sulfuric acid and several bullets from various weapons were found. A piece of blue and white striped cloth was also found in the grave, which corresponded to the blue and white striped vest which was often worn by Alexei. Thank you for watching.